Hello, and welcome again to another edition of Progatron. I'm your host, Roderick Schulbraid, and again, I am so thankful and happy to be here and to have this conversation with you about music. This edition of Cloak Music Volume 6 is entitled When Prague Became Electronica. And I briefly just want to have a conversation about that word, progressive, which I'm taking from the word progress. You start somewhere and then you wind up somewhere else. Whether that's an improvement, well, that's a different story. But music starts in one place, historically, and moves to another one. Some of these periods of time, musical devices, compositions, composers, influences, all of these attributes lend to a specific locality in the continuum or cartography of music and its history. With progressive rock, you had rock, and before that you had blues and jazz, swing, classical influences, etc., etc., Aboriginal music, gypsy music, it goes on and on and on. This is not really a question about music history. This is more about progress. Which comes down to that particular discussion about whether something has improved or not. That is way too subjective for me, personally. I like really experimental music. I appreciate it when anyone of any stature decides to try to do something different. So, with this particular episode, I'm trying to have the conversation about the fact that progressive music, we'll call it that, not rock and roll or whatever else you want to call it. There are specific times in this discussion where we come to a point of convergence, a nexus of sorts. Lots of different influences going lots of different directions at the same time. With this, with the advent of electronic music, electronic composition, synthesis, synthesizers, there was a moment in time when you had this electronic influence start to pervade the discussion and there was a time where I think things fell out of favor and then later on would return and really what I think brought this to mind was the fact that we have lost some important people I will be touching on that later on but when we speak about people and we speak about this subject matter There are those which follow the map, and then there are the pioneers which draw it. And these sublime illustrations are the most remarkable of artistic instruction. Thank you. 
hand that takes Here come the planes They're American planes Made in America Smoking or non-smoking
Ash Ra Tepel. The flowers must die from 1972's Schwingungen, their second album, and that featured Klaus Schultz on drums. We lost Klaus in April of this year. Klaus was one of the founding members of Tangerine Dream and then subsequently this group. A huge influence on ambient music, electronic music, and progressive rock. I came to know this album through the amazing and wonderful magical store Dandelion Records. A very good friend of mine passed in 2019 and he left me some of his records which led me to appreciate vinyl more which led me to start to collect it more. It was in Dandelion Records that I found this album and that's how it comes to be on this program. And before that we had Laurie Anderson, O Superman from 1981, from her album Big Science. This was number two in the UK, and it was thanks to DJ John Peel for that. This particular piece of music really broke Laurie Anderson into the more popular view. She was widely known in the art world as an artist a musician, a composer, and a filmmaker. And Laurie Anderson also shares a great deal in common as a pioneer of electronic devices and approaches to composition in general as the person before that, which was Bjork. I was going to say Bjork, but it's not Bjork. I just learned recently that it's Bjork. I hope I'm pronouncing that right, and I'm sure we all can contest to the fact that my pronunciation in general is pretty substandard. But Bjork is her name, and I'm sorry for calling her Bjork for most of my life. We started off this program with Bjork's Hunter from her 1997 third album, Homogenic, which she worked on in collaboration with Mark Bell of LFO. Mark Bell was a huge influence on Bjerg, and she cites Mark Bell, Stockhausen, Kraftwerk, and Brian Eno as huge influences on her. And I should add quickly that Bjerg is such a a massive influence on music in general, technology, the approach to it all. So it's interesting when one starts to think about who influences the influencer, because that's the compass, in my opinion. And I had mentioned before that Klaus Schultz was one of the founding members of Tangerine Dream. And so now I'm going to leave you with a couple pieces of music mixed together. And I will just as an addendum say, I'm going to be mixing a few pieces of music together in this particular program. Why? Well, because some of the pieces of music are really, really long. And in order to get my idea across, I started to well, not take creative license. I understand that the track is the track and that yes, there's a certain sacred quality to the music in itself, but I have found some pleasant surprises as I mix together this music for your listening pleasure. So I'm going to start off the next section with two pieces of Tangerine Dream.
That was Rubicon from 1975's Rubicon by Tangerine Dream. One of the undisputed pioneers of electronica and this particular section in their history was a pivotal role in the cosmish music scene which led to albums like this and Phaedra, etc. Tangerine Dream is a really, really important character in progressive rock, in electronica, in ambient, in basically 21st century music. It's been a huge influence on me, not that that really means anything at all because I'm influenced by quite a lot of different things on any given day. Because, let's face it, there's a lot of really great music and sound and experience to be influenced by anyway. So I mixed two pieces of music together there. We had Tangerine Dreams Rubicon, but before that we had Genesis from their first album, Electronic Meditation, and that featured Klaus Schultz. And now we're going to have a collection of music mixed together, mostly because it's really long pieces of music, and I thought, why not listen to it simultaneously? You can be the judge if I did a good job or not, but the fact that I'm able to play them simultaneously definitely speaks to the fact that they are interrelated. And that's kind of the point of this program. You're going to be hearing Space Time Continuum. You're going to be hearing Kraftwerk. You're going to be hearing Steve Hillage. Steve Hillage is one of the reasons that I'm doing the program one of the inspirations behind the start of this discussion. Steve Hillage, part of the Canterbury scene, who played in Gong and other bands, later on would resurface in the ambient and the electronic scene. His music started to get played and he even joined it with groups like System 7, which was a colleague of Space Time Continuum. The Canterbury scene definitely made a resurgence, I think, in the rave scene in the UK. And I think that was transported over to the desert scene in the US, etc, etc. And I found when I was doing the research for this program, when I was exploring the music, and thinking about it, you could definitely see, you could definitely draw a line from some of the early psych music to the progressive rock to the emergence of early synthesis and electronic music all the way up to, I would say, this ambient electronic scene, the rave scene, and even psytrance. And this is what I mean about a nexus because there is a convergence or a vertex, whatever you want to call it. In one way, it moves toward metal. In another way, it moves toward psytrance. Another way, it moves towards more art rock and baroque folk music and experimental sound exploration. And that's what makes this exciting. Space Time Continuum work and Steve Hillage, they definitely share something in common, and I hope you appreciate this collage that I have put together.
Radio an. Aus dem Lautsprecher klingt es dann.
So I thought that actually turned out better than expected. I did not have any expectations about how that was actually going to resolve itself, but I was happily pleased with that little collage. And what we were listening to were three specific pieces of music played more or less simultaneously. And the reason, of course, is because, well, two of them in particular they are 22 minutes each. So if I played them back to back, you get the idea. All of a sudden, an hour has gone by and you see the situation. So I decided to put them all together. And what we were listening to was the following. It started off with Space Time Continuum from 1994's Seabiscuit album. And that was Voice of the Earth. Then we had the main structure of the piece, which was Kraftwerk's Autobahn, the 1974 album, and we were listening to the title track, one of the most amazing pieces of music, I think, because it really started to shift the conversation. And that's what this program is about. This idea of progressive rock has progressed to somewhere else. Now, where that is, well, I don't know. They considered it an Autobahn which was interesting. And it definitely gives you this pastoral perspective, which was great because also we had Steve Hillage's Garden of Paradise from the 1979 album Rainbow Dome Music. So, if you were just listening to some prose of illumination, a space of light. Well, the next part of the program, the next section, is really a series of poems about the shadow.
It really is interesting how evocative the minor key can be compared to the major. We were just listening to Brian Eno and David Byrne from My Life in the Bush of Ghosts, which Bjork actually cited as a reference for her. It was the 1981 album, and we were just listening to Pitch to Voltage. And before that, we had Tim Blake from the 1976 album Crystal Machine, and that was Midnight. Tim Blake was a contemporary in the collectives of Gong and Hawkwind. And preceding that, we had the UK psychedelic band Darkstar. That was the deadline from Cryonics, a compilation from 1989 to 1992. And at the beginning of that whole set, we had Ariel Kalma with Voltage Controlled Wave. That was from the compilation and evolutionary music, 1972 to 1979. And just as we had the cosmic music that was being presented in Europe and elsewhere, on the other side of the world, we had Isayo Tomita.
That was Garden by myself, Roderick Schulbraid, and that is off the Neo Tantra compilation number 24, released just a few days ago this year. And you can find that on Bandcamp. Before that, we had System 7 featuring Steve Hillage with Fractal Liaison from the 1991 album System 7. Preceding that, the ubiquitous Radiohead with everything in its right place from 2000's Kid A, a seminal album that changed so much. And speaking of people who really add so much to the conversation, we had Jean-Michel Jarre, Oxygen Part 2 from Oxygen 1976. And at the top of the whole segment, we had Isayo Tomita, Snowflakes Are Dancing, from the 1974 album of the same name, his wonderful interpretation of Debussy's music. So I want to thank everyone so deeply for listening and for participating in this conversation about pioneers and cartography, maps and compasses. This has been Progatron. This has been Cloak Music Volume 6, How Prague Became Electronica. Thank you so much. This is Roderick Schulbraid. Signing off.